afternoon, the ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast for me, your host, Imperial Dane. We are off here to an exciting one uh, versus one on Fame and Will Approach. It's going to be a longer one, so the problem we made a game announced. We'll be looking here at Crab Battle, fighting for the United States of America. Fighting on here for the third infantry division going up against Siberian. Siberian fighting here for Germany. It's right. It's Oberkommando West. Rolling ahead for the 116th Panzer Division, intent on clearing through a passage here to further gain somewhere in Belgium. Commanders are here, Armour Company, Airborne Company and Mechanized. Not clear if that is because he gained it or because it was part of free, but either way he chose Airborne. Siberian on the other hand has gone straight here for fortifications, which is also freely available now for those that wish to try it out. We're noting folks going to be on survey for him. And of course, there might then be a clear intention of getting some MG34s out to pin those armies down to the dirt that they belong. But back here to Crab Battle. Two rifles caught here, two units full of GIs with their M1 Garands. Stu and Pioneer making a direct <coughs> move with a fuel point. Pretty common stuff there. Now you go, first engagement. Rear echelon troops have versus the opponent. He's going for a second rear echelon unit. So it looks like Crab Battle is sort of opting for a bit of more territorial games early on here. This is fire. Though the rear echelon troops are in this case rather outgunned here by Siberian Storm Pioneers. The M1 Carbine really does know much to Storm Gewehr Fjord 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 moving up north. And there you go. Quick to retreat there. Stopping up. They could move. You are more generally tend to be more accurate when you're not moving, so stopping up the right points can get you a bit more damage, of course. Moving you can, of course, stay closer than the old to get a bit more, so it's a bit of a tricky thing there. Now, pardon me to say he should have stayed long, still a bit longer, then he might have done a bit more damage, but that is ultimately just a guess from my side, and it is not a bad decision here that Sabine is making. Just not the one I would. By the way, we should rest from up engaged by Fultz going here. Sabine so far making a good push for the centre, ignoring the right flank here. The aggressive push of the Storm Pioneers probably going to power a bit of pressure here. Two crab battle might try and draw away forces from elsewhere as well. Not bad thinking there. Truck moving ahead. Munitions are secured so far. Crab battle is getting lots of territory. He's got three riflemen out, two rear channel units. A bit more if we can get the pathfinder if that is what he wants. Certainly can be good to have. To sort of support you in a prolonged engagement since the ability to basically finish off units below a amount of certain health is actually quite handy. It can certainly be used to sort of punish an opponent for a draw on out fight. With pathfinders nearby, you generally want to finish off a fight versus them quickly, or at least to support their supporting. Well, right here, we're seeing a Fulcus walking caught up in a small house, getting surrounded here by the rifle on several sides. He's going to quickly turn up ugly for Siberian. He'll need to move in and basically either draw the fire or somehow break off the rifle, otherwise, he could lose risking the Fulcus gunners here. Meanwhile, Crab Bell's pushing up through the south a bit more aggressively. There you go, already down to three men here, low on health, low on health. Right now would be a good choice to actually move up here. I mean, I know once you say we come, the person gets the front door here. I mean, again, note, with these buildings, there's only a one exit. There's no back door or anything. They can just get in there go. Low health. Had he moved a bit closer with these earlier, I think he could have finished off this unit. But it looks like here, that Sabian might be able to pull off a hasty retreat right through right the gauntlet of enemy fire. Going here for a few points, taking advantage of the fact that Sabine might be now splitting up here a bit more. Centers that they open. Nice sense there by Crab Battle, seizing upon it. Probably not very much like a crab, though. I don't think they're very much good at that. But the fourth rifle squad there. Quick grenade here, so already a structure. Something we're noting it is a mechanized regiment headquarters here. Storm Pioneers firing away, taking up some heavy cover. The rifle in, not well covered here. Carts with stacks of hay in it, not necessarily known for their greater bulletproofing capabilities. Already being forced away, a nice base of fire here, created by the Fulcans and the Storm Pioneers. And there you go, the first MD-34 has arrived here for Siberian. S quickly following up with the second one. It's really adding in some heavy machine gun efforts there, versus his American opponent. But Crab Battle here keeping up a nice clear zone around the center, keeping away both few points away here from Siberian. Interesting enough, Sabine does not seem to be very interested in vaulting over the cover there. A little something I'd note there. 
It's on the line from the score. Souls beginning to look a bit worse for wear. And he's actually not going for a lieutenant. He's in fact going straight on for the captain. Interesting choice there. Maybe he's already got a feeling. He might have already seen this and sort of figuring out what's it been. He might be planning. Oh, he's actually got a plan of his own. The options are certainly there. Of course, we're interesting to see what actually happens. What crap battle will do of this. Again, sort of reactionary measure. Or more than direct, sort of more acting measure. Aggressive push over the MD-34. Apparently, Sabine feels he can get away with that. Probably realizing every force down here. Good job. Sharp reaction there as well from Sabine. Good tactical sense. We have some new right in, engaging the Fulskers up here. Slight tends to using this building with the Fulskers. Then they aren't really good. And there's some maybe on the back side, but usually the enemy isn't there. This is more building for either machine guns or Obersol Darden. Or anything with a lot of machine gun, really. They got the MG-34 getting these Yankees to hit the dirt. And then Ghost Storm Pioneers climbing over the fence. Full that. This building much better suited due to the broader side here. But of course there's an awful lot of rifle angles right here and they are all in heavy cover so lastly... Oh, never mind. Full of hit there. Their courage failed them. Something like that. And there you go, the captain got a quick encounter with the MG-34 and realized it better places to be. I'll get you one day, evil crap, behind a machine gun at a really, really convenient location. He might shift over there. No ambulance on the way. That will probably help him a bit. Boys, you ready to roll out? I would have figured he might pop the MG-34 into the building here and be able to cover this area and particularly then use some barbed wire to sort of make it harder to approach directly. Panzer strikes up. He's clearly worried about enemy vehicles and... Ooh, He's also getting a Puma heavy armor car here. You could maybe consider a flak half track, but clearly he's again worried about something a bit more nasty. And certainly with a captain out, that of course also means chances of Stuart, in which case the Puma will certainly be a much better choice than the flak half track. Second truck moving up here, he might be planning something. He could either be a spare panzer at quarters around here, could cover the fuel end here, not bad. Or he could be opting for a medic. Or oh, battle group headquarters. That's quite common around here using the building base is something that can you mostly hide on forcing the opponent around here, in which case if you have it here they'll have to get close within range of troops healing and reinforcing here, which overall means it's a strong position summoning out, but at the same time it can actually mean you'll pin yourself down by sort of not quite full intention, which can actually make it easier for the opponent to contain you around here. So it can work both ways. It rather depends on how your opponent handles it. Puma here blasting away. Faving away with this 50mm gun. Oh no, Fritz, I don't think this is what we're here for. I think we're more for reconnaissance, not blasting a dead Americans behind a stone wall. Just shut up, Friedrich. You're always complaining. Just shoot some Americans and enjoy it. Again, here with the building, the Fulker is now getting more surrounded here by Reifman. He should really close up here. Right here, behind where there's fact only one window. He could probably get them when they try to pull out then. That would just mean to be my fault here. And there you go, escaping. Oh, that's also the other way around. Yes. I missed that one. By the way, Sabian's folks can barely make it out there. He's making a... Uh, how should we say it? Call it cold retreat. Just pulling back more voluntarily towards here instead of a full retreat or a hot retreat. I suppose you could call that. I don't know. Just trying to find some terminology for sort of this kind of thing. Oh, yes, a pullback. Oh, uh, wait. Shooting here. Puma blasting away. And we're actually seeing a Howard on the way. Interesting, interesting. He might, of course, be sending up here the more defensive posture to a certain extent that Sabine is taking up. And getting a more how to sort of deal with that. That's interesting. That's interesting. It's a bit rare you actually see a player so early on go for the Howard set, but it's not necessarily a bad idea. Interesting. Interesting. And I imagine the captains here then sort of keep the Puma at bay with his bazookas. Troops haven't got the trouble there trying to push away. He's trying to attack from some angst. Watch more denying fuel. There is practically losing lots of territory here. He's been too focused. He's actually forgotten about the rest of the map, and the spin has been able to take advantage of that quite squarely. Puma here, they took a bit of damage, some bazooka shots, and I imagine a quick arrival grenade as well. No grenade shells, you could actually take an advantage of things here. And there you go, Pack Howard's are moving up. Five from here, though, need to get away, not being good here again. Strong point here, Force Siberian, it's going to be much harder to push him off. Though again, to a certain extent, it's easy to contain him there. It's a bit of a double thing. Right now he needs to break out into North apartment, we would say. There you go, we got the pack, how to firing. 
One, oh, looks like he's trying to set up the building here with a Kedemeth, and it's been some really concerned about enemy armor or vehicles either way. Puma, a Kedemeth, and a Pantrashrek. At the same time, several Pantrashreks, though at the same time, he does seem to be too concerned with something heavy. It more seems like he's worried about a light vehicle punching point. through and doing a lot of damage. Looks like he might be going here for the and power to there with the Puma. Shots fired, hitting a bush. Not quite as effective. There you go. Captain moving in, dispatching it with a bit of violence. But quick losing territories have been now really back in the fight. Over two have been three false grenadiers. Oh, he's actually making use of his command. We're seeing S mines going down. Wonderful. Wunderbar. Wunderbar, Siberian. Not a lot of players act to use it beyond, you know, getting an MG34. And they've got this your position to get away. And there you go. Nice little minefield here. Well placed. Well placed. Though at the same time, his opponent already has a minesweeper, so could be a bit unintentionally forward, but nonetheless, not bad. Not bad. Good spot, and he's on a flank where his opponent might not expect too much encounter, so he might not be paying as much attention, which could increase the chance of the mines actually doing some damage. Got the hounds of fighting here. Shot miss and slip blowing out the entire side of the building. I suppose that's another kind of nice shooting. Well, there we go. Blasting away most of the unit. Heavy casualties inflicted there upon the forces of Siberian and the 116th. Forces moving up close to the map. Yep, there we go. Still hung on out at the right and all clumped up. And almost forgot the entire unit that the Shion here could finish off the job. Ah, there we go. No survivors. No survivors. A bit of slow there to get up to the cover. Now, in fact, getting there right as the storm punters do, but that seems to have the lone help. So, there we go. He was able to push this point back at the same time, also getting force war two. The minesweepers. He might actually be expecting something and then actually getting a full minesweeper force in. Or just having upgraded them and don't have anything else to sort of shift away. Who knows? Who knows? By the way, it's going to ruin uh, Siberian's mine surprise here. Yeah. 30, and he's actually setting up a shrapnel. Of course, he's going for all three trucks right away. Though, of course, at the same time, he's got the fuel fault he's trading in, and he's also got both fuel points at the moment. So, it doesn't work. And he's actually setting up the shrapnel at quarters in the middle of the road, covering the center victory point. Now, that's a bit of an interesting position. Bit of an interesting position. It's not what you usually see. Usually, at least, the person I would go for around here, you know, trying to cut the fuel pump. So, it's not. Of course, most finding here that's certainly drawing upon crap battle, but now he's actually moving up towards it, getting points back. Good. Good. That's going to have to force Spin to spread out, so he can't longer find around his strong point, which is obviously around here. And of course, all this is happening, he's coming under pressure here from the Pack Howitzer, which can actually end up now as an Achilles heel towards Siberian as the fight progresses. A few good here, and that could be it. Oh, and anti tank able to spot here by Fox Grenadiers. Puma's moving up here. Minefield cleared out. He didn't get the fuel point, though, but he managed to clear out the minefield and actually rendered one victory point neutral. Commander abilities ready. Puma managed to counter attack. If only the captain had been around. Captain Bob and his bazooka boys. They would later go on to after the war forming a band called exactly that. Also noting he's actually getting upgrades now for his rifle increasing their firepower with browning automatics. Nice idea there, nice idea that's only going to increase the pressure upon Siberian infantry, which certainly does not quite possess that amount of anti infantry firepower, though of course the Obersoldaten might arise soon. Reconnaissance vehicle ready. And fix that. It looks like yeah, he's shifting up the axis of approach here, going, deciding not going to bash his head into a Stahlhelm formed wall. Or shit wall there. Not a bad approach, not a bad approach. Probably the right decision there. He's just shifting up, forcing Sabin away from a strong point and maybe also into more open ground. And safer, far away from a safe zone. Out here firing, he probably could try and barrage. The pack out is actually less 
accurate when regularly flying then compared to barraging where it really becomes highly effective. A good pair of barrages can really kick you get yourself well with it. But well, there you go, MD crew quickly being cleared out. Almost got the entire unit, so Ben Walsh making progress. Panzerstreich hiding here. He's clearly worried about vehicles, really, really worried about them. But so far there's been no sign of it at all from his proponent. And what is this? Airborne popping in. No sign, by the way, of Pathfinders. A bit disappointing in that. Would have loved to see some. He could also consider airdropping actually in a 50 cal, but that could actually be an effective round here. He could have caught all the troops there with it. From the right angle, in fact, he could have cleared this up, popped in the 50 cal, and then could have pressed everything to burn out there, maybe. But that's a bit much too late now. Just an afterthought. Fire, there you go. Effective fire going in there from the howitzer. And all sneak up the anti-tank gun. He knows where the spare panzer course is, so he can now blast away with the anti-tank gun. There we go. Good work there. Bit of a dangerous thing he did there. I mean, on one side he can cover, but at the same time, at this position, it's also much an easier target for something like, say, an anti tank gun. He's actually going for this. That's actually a bit unnecessary. I don't think it actually increases damage just penetration, so he's not actually getting much in effect out of this. Oh! Almost got the Puma, though. Good shooting. Bloody. Further fine going up here in one in the south. No sound upgrades here for the airborne. He could consider some light machine guns, so even without them, they're reasonably okay. But you generally get a lot out of them with that machine guns, I would say. And there you go. Schwerer Panzer goes down. The orbits were able to arrive. But there won't be a Panther to assist Siberian here. By the way, with the Schwerer Panzer goes down, a major obstacle went down. MD-54 fine, but about to get flanked here. Well done, well done. Crack battle is turning time again, having made a very nice swing in terms of tactics and strategy. Up maneuvering Sabian's positions and slowly taking part of the linchpins of them. Good, good. Now, of course, the question is how will Sabian react to this and counter attack? One option could be actually and maybe aiming for Stuka Safus and basically striking down this largely infantry force at the moment. That could work out. A flak half track might also be an option, though, might not. Or, considering the amount of fuel he has, he could go straight for a King Tiger and basically say, Yeah, see, see, see. Approaching up with the Brownings here. Still no sign of an upgrade here for the Airborne. A bit surprised at that. Though I suppose he doesn't have munitions for too many Brownings. Forces rebuilding, these have managed to reach Veterans IV impressively enough. Orbital on flank back there with Sion Pioneers in support, good, good. Reorganizing. Air airborne are definitely not going to win with M1 carbines at range versus an Orbital Dying Unit, that's practically asking for them to get executed. Nice hit there from the anti tank gun, cleared out Dita there. Still managed to do some damage there, but ultimately, there we go. Another killer penny by the anti tank gun or something else. Are they forced to pull back there? And he also actually set it up for a retreat point there. Good, good. Plenty of points here. He could consider saying a pack 43. Or maybe set up some either flat emplacements or machine gun bunker to cover up some of the points. For example, right here, machine gun bunker would be good to cover the fuel. Or can set it around here to cover the southern victory point. The options are there. But well, there we go, a bit of more manpower can be calling in a King Tiger. I mean, that's been due to the fact that he able to control the victory point for so long, but now, of course, he's getting more trouble and his opponent's striking back much more viciously. In fact, getting a major now, so armor will soon be on the way. Oh, the Ken Maffer got crushed in the collapse of the building. In fact, that got veterancy too. Nasty work there. The victory is 34 that continues to cover the centre here. Going to stall on the assault. And there we go. Browning's up for the airborne. For the paratroopers. 
Screaming Eels. At the same time, the MG44 getting clicked by the Rockman, the Browning Automatic. Doing a lot of damage there. In fact, we could see another MG42 clear up. There we go, Oversold and Counter Attack in the centre. Sabian is clearly waiting for the King Tiger now. Just a bit more, bit more. He can get it. There we go. Königstiger. Schwerer Panzerabteilung. Send Unterstützung. Come on, press the button. There we go. And a bit too slow this move, got hit by an anti-tank rifle grenade. Quick flank here from the Foscos, but they are yeah, in a bad position, and we do see he makes the right decision pulling away. Back to crap battle. Much larger force in at the moment. Also got more support weapons, so of course soon he's going to be in a bit of a tighter position as the King Tiger arrives. And I imagine that's going to catch a bit off guard. Also noting though, he's got one disadvantage then against partly to the fact he was a bit too focused around the strong point for a bit too long. He's heavily low on victory points because he didn't pay enough, enough attention to the victory points. So there's a bit of a tricky situation there. He's going to need to rectify quickly or otherwise the being could win this pretty much hands down. Is under attack. But there we go. A Sherman arrives here to support the 3rd Infantry. Everyone doing that to the fine there. We got the hack howitzer blasting as well. Puma moves in. And looks like he's to a high slash round here for the Sherman. Bit of a risky assault there from the Foxcars, and there we go, wiped out in the entirety. Too many bullets. Too much for him, they've got the MG photo still acting basically as gatekeeper there. And now the bad news are arriving here for crap battle. The King Tiger has arrived. That's definitely going to cause a bit of a problem here, though he's got a veteran three anti-tank guns, so he's also using tagging. Good to see that. In fact, the Puma will have a bit of a hard time escaping that. Again with the chunks and rounds. But this time, an active man to escape. King Tiger, though, might have less success. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh no, he's unintentionally moving it closer. He's unintentionally moving closer. King Tiger revealed itself. There we go. Good hit there from the veteran Tianta tank and using its armor piercing, discarding sapo rounds. Sherman back to armor piercing rounds. Another hit there, King Tiger didn't do much. But somehow, though, the anti tank. Oh, he's going to try and move it away. But at the same time, that's going to give him. Oh, he turned it around. King Tiger moving in. He forgot about it. Apparently, thought he's pulled further back. Either way, his anti tank gun crew here is in a perilous situation. There we go. And they can untort. Königstiger. Zerstören. And there you go. Airborne just getting crushed as well. Like puny mortals before a god of crook steel. Striding across the battlefield. They get slaughtered. And that's definitely going to cause a bit of fuss here for Crap Battle. He probably wasn't entirely expecting a King Tiger. Apparently, a few rifles to be sacrificed. Either to assuage his anger or buy more time. More like that. Pack out continues to heroically fire away. Though failing to make much impression upon that thick armor. At the same time as everything's going on, he's quickly shifting a force down there. Good, good. He's always sort of trying to find a new path to advance on. He's not going to get stumped in one place. Good tactical and strategic approach there by Crab a Battle. Instead of just bashing his head into a wall. Nice strike there, and veterans is free! So been having a chance of pushing forward with this King Tiger, you could actually finish him off right now, I think. He's barely able to seriously harm it. And there you go, a bit of a desperate move by Crab Battle. He can't get it called in, actually, an anti-tank gun, but he's actually airdropping in, so he doesn't have to worry about build time. He can just re quick, immediately recruit it. So that's actually an interesting move there. 
I mean, more or less, it's the same cost as an anti-tank. You just don't get any crew for it. So of course, choose the cheapest, point. which in this case would be the rifleman. All right, you guys. AT gun now well, that's definitely one way of doing it. It's only one of the faster methods, of course, in this case, you choose basically to pay more to just have it here quicker. So only interesting to note then, not what you usually see. Sandbag showing up, but clearly some are getting a bit more worried about him feeling any attacks that could pressure him too much. Victory points are quickly shifting back and forth. Could it be that crap battle's aiming for a Jackson here to deal with the King Tiger? The Koenig Seeger, by the way, with a Pintamap machine gun on top. He might want to actually get it repaired a bit. The less damage, the better in the longer run. A bold attempt here to mount fishing run for the King Tiger, simply not taking the bait. So be might want to consider again setting up some defences around some of the victory points there to make things a bit harder for his opponent. Machine gun bunkers or flak emplacements could be options. I say again, allies at 100 points. Veterans 1 and take aim is now an option here for the anti-tank gun again. Puma not looking too good. And we're actually seeing a second spare pentacles up. More or less same position before again. Very intent on coming up the center there, making any direct movements here much more difficult. Also needing a pair of trench binoculars there. And I believe that is actually a pair of binoculars for spotting for anti-aircraft guns, if I'm not mistaken. Fun facts there. Rapidly securing points. Getting his vehicle repaired, good, good. So being there is a bit lacking in forces to actually hold this amount of territory. And again, you know, he's gone for fortification, so he actually has several options for sort of Academy helping that out. I mean, if you didn't just build a point. trench and pop an MG-34 into it, that would also be an option, but... They don't quite seem to be making an appearance yet. There we go, anti-tank again firing. Ultimately, up pack Howard, sir. A bit of a bow move there. Shot penetrating, veteran Z2. Sherman moving up, here King Tiger actually taking heavy damage now. Repeat your and there we go. Mark Tiger as well. Take aim. There we go. King Tiger heavily damaged. Well executed there by him. Sabin was a bit too slow to retreat, but managed to get out. He can, of course, use his Puma tank to lay down smoke cover in front of it. I mean, that is one thing to actually use it for as well. It's not something that's actually usually considered. But there you go. Probably though in this case to save the Puma again, you can use that to cover up other units as well. Oh, and he did not save it, I think. Looks like that got it. Oh, blimey. That's a great blow there to Siberian's forces. Another orbital down unit arrives. I think the other one got lost, actually. Uh, killed. Anti tank gun. A second anti tank gun. Playing confidently with his M1 anti tank guns there. Solidly, solidly. Nice to see there. Some players don't seem to think highly of the M1 anti tank gun, but he can actually be quite powerful under the right condition, in particular. Thanks to the take aim ability, it is a very great sense again, it basically extends the range. But now, I mean, he really needs to get some victory points, they can't take him down here. King Tiger almost ready. Airball making their way forward, Sherman ready for battle again. You should have still no sign of any tank destroyers which will be used here. King Tiger makes move forward again. Shots firing there. No armor pinning rounds, they're not of them penetrating somehow though. King Tiger next sneak up behind the building, good, good. At the same time as Crap Valley striking down on the forces. There you go, King Tiger takes a few hits again with the armor piercing rounds. He could conduct a combat blitz to try and flank up on the anti-tank guns there. It would certainly be an idea. Seems like that is not what's happening. Instead, another veteran of the anti-tank gun. Need to get the King Tiger out of there. 
An option right now would definitely be to get a Struka Zafruz to bombard the anti-tank gun crews and knock them out. I would in fact strongly recommend that. Tools reinforcing. Orbs are making the way forward. Same time, got push up here through the south. And there goes Sherman under fire from the King Tiger, closing in on Veteran T2. Need the cavalry lands up. King Tiger is in. We see the captain charging forwards. Apparently, you're estimating the power is bazookas versus such a large armored beast. There you go. Combat blitz up. Another hit there on the Sherman, almost getting it, almost getting it. And very close to it to two there. So Bernie needing a desperate defense here from around the battle group headquarters. Airborne, in fact, close game wipe. There you go. Veteran D5 Storm Pioneers. Elite Soldaten. Little Kreuzregan, if you will. And sees an MD35 from the ruins of the manor house. Nasty work there. Back to him. In terms of damage, we're noting in the crap battle so far it's a bit in the lead, the kill wise it's been a bit there, but training Sabine is a bit on the back foot now. He's going to have to sort of lead a very good strike again to sort of get back. Infantry wise not looking to guard either. Second spare pencil quarters knocked out. He's going to rely a bit on getting that King Tiger back in the fight as quickly as possible and doing a lot of damage. Again with the armor piercing rounds from quickly falling with the King Tiger. There you go, though, there's a chance for the Orbison to make forwards and exit and move forward to clear up these positions. He should go for that. We're actually seeing a crew being launched forwards, did he? Oh, that was an accident. Could have been unfortunate. He lost the crew because then he lost the veterans for the tank as well. Still on bring up several pairs of King Tiger. That would be a good move. The faster you can get that means the fight, the better. Orbison done versus Airborne. <laughs> And just corpses strewn all over the place. The center seen most of the fighting. There's been sort of lesser fighting here and to a much lesser extent fighting up here. Victory points the wise stuff in, sort of still holding on. So it's definitely getting a bit close here. Really should consider something to sort of hold some of these points up here without having to spend infantry on it. MG34, heavy machine guns are now available. Big tag makes Ooh. Captain and all the thing a bit too close there. Gutes shot. Veteran 2 there, increasing accuracy amongst other things. And now we're just seeing that crap battle is quickly losing infantry. He's bleeding out rapidly. Now might be the chance here for Sabine to get back in the fight. He's going to clear out this MD34 as well. The counterattack to the south would be the one again. This really exemplifies why it's safe, for example, a flat. Position able to dwell, or a machine gun bank around here could also do quite well. So, any bit of dispersion here, crap balance launching, and everything sending in the major to lead the charge. Oh, nice flank here, the rifleman getting behind everything, getting behind it. Good job there. Forms of being to have to deal with stragglers behind his lines. But there you go, the anti second moving forward today, coming in front from the King Tiger. If the King Tiger clear those quickly, then it will be it. Storm Palace moving as well, good job there. Nicely done there, nicely done there. He pounced upon the isolated anti tank gun like a champion. Now, second chance he will be to blitz forward and get the anti tank gun here. Meanwhile, got Sherman with the Tiger now being exposed. Pulling back the King Tiger, like to deal with that. Sturm Pioneer is moving forward like two soldaten. He might be able to get on there, on there. Rear those fighting there, got combat blitz. Ah, uh, don't want to blitz with the rear towards them. Ah, got away, got away. King Tiger wants more new repairs, but 33 killed so far. Veteran T2. If you get to Veteran T3, you can get the spearhead mode. There's rarely a lot of people don't actually use it. It's actually not bad. Got say. Oh, got another rifle unit there. Well struck. Jackson arriving at a tank coming forward. King Tiger still need to repairs. Pull it back, Siberian. And cover it up. There you go, the flanking. There you go, striking for so positions once. Trying to get behind it. Good job. Oh, getting caught. He had something. No. 
And he's focusing on the Sherman! Or the King Tigris! Automatically, and he hasn't paid attention either way. Oh, there we go! Shot through the rear! King Tiger blown apart! A tragic loss for the Reich! A hero gone, and a lot of important equipment, and they're lost. Now Siberian is rather stuck in a large pile of doom. Not good here. And you're fairly firing away there. Looks quickly need an enforcement, certainly struggling here. The Sherman's a great problem. Need to move the false guns and help. And he needs some more anti tank assets. One option is actually get up a pack 43 now. Also, looks like he actually lost the pack out somehow. Another option might be some Pumas here for sort of a quick intermediate solution, or I suppose aiming for another King Tiger. Are we not looking good at the moment? Drop then repairing. Actually, I think I'm supposed to look back at crap battle. My apologies. Oh, we're nice assault there by the Fox Guys forcing back the troops. Tank support is here. Sherman ready. Oh, I think it is, Ben. Sometimes, sorry again, it can get a bit confusing when I'm supposed to keep track off. It very rarely happens when he does, it's always a bit annoying, so my apologies for the confusion there. That's certainly not a happy sight for Zidane, of course. It's a nice little monument for crap battle. Now, more Shermans are made of up the airborne, also leading the charge here. The Ben is definitely in a tricky position at the moment. He's going to need something to turn this around. I mean, he's still got a chance to at least victory points, but otherwise his opponent's sort of basically steamrolling him right now. He needs something else. And they got getting a kidney for maybe that could work. The captain here getting absolutely mowed down. With the steam party is holding up here, Mindfit here could quickly do something. And there you go, the captain got wiped out. Yuna's getting murdered left and right, barely any infantry left for Sabin, he's really now relying on the Kedmer for his first one, all of a sudden you want to do Oh, the battle group headquarters went down as well, this is just getting worse and worse. Chemin coming in number five from the flatting placements, and an airstrike going in as well, though mind you, it won't do anything to the trucks actually. So it's a bit pointless, I suppose it could just be a sort of... Finishing flourishing move, but not going to give that much an effect. Sadly, for whatever reasons, the United States Air Force. Oh, it does shoot after trucks, never mind then, but not in the ones place, but that's about it though. Again, we're setting up here. Quickly cleared out. On the other hand, he might be making a slight mistake here, which is actually exposing his rear here to the. Flat cannons, though that might not seem to be it. Still on here with a bazooka. There's also Pantry came not much to do with it. Oh, nicely done, nicely done. He stole away the anti tank gun. He stole away the anti tank gun here from his opponent. He might be able to effect a count, come back, a counter attack using the anti tank gun, shooting into the rear of the Americans, getting the veterans in free Sherman. Oh no, he needs to lay down smoke car, but it's too late, too late. Ga Jackson got the anti tank gun though, but not before he lost his veterans in free one. Smokescreen one also laid down, well done there, but a bit too late, the Storm Pioneers need to get away. Now the question is, can Crab Battle quickly solidify and turn things around? He's only got 27 points left in HP he needs to hold, but at the same time Sabine does possess a small but extremely veteran core of units. It's definitely going to be a challenge here. Airborne sealing a panzer check. Forces repairing tanks left and right. Gun 
And here, so the end counter attack begins. Betchen for Orbis Soldaten. Siberian clearly keeping a cool head. Some players again at this low might go a bit nuts, but Siberian seems to think nice and clearly, which he ought to, like a veteran player. And now it's over to Crap Battle, who's actually taking quite a few losses here as well. But he certainly does not quite possess the same armored advantage. So Siberian's still a bit behind there. Major quickly realizes he's got better places to be. Okay. MG 34 holding up the center. He could switch out to incendiary arm pushing around to increase damage here. That would do him a lot of good. Still on trying to get the point there. 25 kills. Another Sherman on the way. Crap battle, of course, identifying correctly his opponent's mostly got infantry at the moment. He probably isn't so worried about armor since he's basically mown down all the trucks. So Nitsa Bin for some reason goes for another King Tiger which cost him a lot of manpower and in short couldn't get in prison on the field in fact might lose him. On victory point before that. So to a large extent crap battle's got a bit easy. RPG, RPG. Big thing you said moving up Kenneth on his own but there we go catches the Sherman. Sending him from wing up Pants Storm Pioneers Fultz Gunners. Moving straight into the line, a fight of two of them, and a route clearing up one. A Ken there, but I fear it might not be enough. And there you go, kaput. There was armor on the way. And he actually tried to lay down the smoke car again. Good use of the smoke ability though, but sadly was a bit too late there. And there's also several trucks here he could salvage, but sadly he does need the fuel. And he isn't playing a scavenge, in which case you could actually get some munitions out of it as well. That's a bit unfortunate here for Siberian. So I'm still like Kenmeth is now. Crap battles will find him a bit more under pressure again. Upgrading your Sherman, shifting out high close rounds again. He knows what the name of the game is. It's don't have to worry about the Panzers game. Though he might also want to aim for the not charged straight into an MP34 he's seen under several last few times. Smoke here, not bad, not bad. The problem is, of course, he can't actually move through it. But he will cover up a pullback here. Airborne now quickly putting a stop to that, though. And as soon as the smoke begins dissipating, the MP34 opens up again. So a bit unfortunate here for Siberian. It was a maneuver that did not quite work out as well as he'd hoped. Another captain on the way. An interesting move. Considering the current situation, one might have figured instead a lieutenant. We'd upgrade with a second BAR, but apparently that is not the choice here. Buy him. You could also consider oh, he's at apparently already upgraded them and gotten something else here. Very well. Making swift progress. Taking back points. Shall we go into fire here? So Ben now really sort of getting back into things. Taking advantage of his opponent's lack of infantry. Focusing on anti tank as it's making it much harder for the armor to move around. Still on pioneers, so they need some healing. He could retreat them and set up that. Well, he could actually just lay down some medical supplies there. He need to get in the way. He can't afford to lose that veteran fire unit right now. To lose them right here would be catastrophic. Oh! Never mind, yeah, that would be catastrophic. Eventually, five still pioneer unit with a bazooka. That's going to cost Siberian dearly. Battle group headquarters is going up. Now he's only got one veteran D5 unit left, that would be the Oversoldaten. And there you go, never up. But again, they could actually fire back and probably suppress them here due to their veteran bonuses, which allow for that. It takes a bit of time. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. More smoke going down here. Good use coming. of the ability. We know things go south. Fire that a smoke screen up. I don't know if we got it. 
Going for the extra points here, trying to drain down his opponent. This is probably going to be one of his better chances at the moment. Tank support is here. Sherman ready. He could try and lay down a no, bunker with the Fox Gunners. Again, with all the armor around, that would be of limited effect. Once more, a bit quiet. Everyone's coming there. Now things ticking down again. We're losing a capture point. Ticking down again. Though things are a bit passive, both forces a bit worn out. Not quite intended on meeting engagements. But here we go, airborne versus the veteran fight, Orbital Darden. And there you go, the airborne paratroopers are quick to retreat here in the face of these veteran panzer grenadiers. From season five. And there you go. Oh, the Major got killed with a hit from the Kettenmapper. Good shooting Heinz. Fox was in trouble. Captain moving in for the big two point. And there you go. Orbs are making a straight rush here. Sprinting ahead. Good job there again. Keeping his eye on the ball, which are the victory points that the champion is losing here. Sadly, he not getting an MD34 up here to sort of slow down any advances there. But there you go. The MD34 is now arriving. Again, a bunker could also have been a consideration. Sherman arriving from the south here. 12 points left. Orbs are needs retreat. Retreat, retreat. At least pop some smoke. There we go, it's a bit late to learn for the last time. Sherman charging in though. Two work in there for the Panzer as well. One of them eventually two, that's definitely bad news here for the Sherman. One more hit, one more hit. Have we anything? No. Oh, gets away there. Close call. And there you go, the MG34 opening up in the airport and the MG34 supporting them. But there we go, quick to make a detour strike up from the south here with the Sherman. McKen we have for not quite covering up for that. And then he turns it, revealing itself right there to the Sherman. And there, right between the two. Other one, Metri two. Smoke down on the other one. Good, good, good. Allowing him to clear up one. Well executed. And cleared out the crew just as hits for three. three. This is definitely getting tense here. So Ben's taking down, but he's striking back. Like a ferocious beast. Wounded, but not quite dead yet. And there you go, switching out to Intendi Armour, finishing round, well done, well done. About time we saw it in use, but there you go, the Orbison sprint forwards. And get absolutely shredded here by the MG34 and the Brownings. A heroic charge that quickly ended up in a, well, charge of the Light Brigade. Now the Airborne making the move forwards. He's got very little to sort of halt them. If only had more orbs of Darden, or maybe had gone for Luftwaffe instead, so he could add some Fagium Jaegers. One for Matt to scavenge with its Jaeger infantry. Another supply truck down. Airborne hold up the south. Quick grenade there. Ooh, there we go. Almost wiped out the entire unit. What was packing that shit I'm gonna do? Apparently someone got a bit of an extra special one from Germany. And there goes Sherman charging forwards. A bit of a desperate defense here, trying to hold up the victory points for as long as possible. But now we are seeing a spin once more making headway. Sneaking through the cracks, there's also a point he a point up here could go for with another unit. He seems very intent on the center and that. Does allow crab out of to hold up there. Two Shermans, by the way. Keep up the pressure. They're down to 100 points. Less than 100 points. MD34 cleared out. The King Tiger still remains. And there goes Sherman getting caught here by Tula Ken Reffers. Veteran T4. And there you go. Nicely laid down smoke screen there. Well played, well played. Definitely need to get that one back for healing and reinforcement. It'll be an absolute shame here to lose. But there you go. It's number two Sherman moves in. Bad news there for the Kedden Alpha, and there we go, knocked out. Going for the victory point up there. Forces run off. Nice hit there for the punch on the Sherman. Go, got the victory point. There's also a super punch on the there. 
And there we go, the King Tiger wreck is, well, finally wrecked even further. Just more raket in there first. Forces being shifted forward. And wrecking on the Kettenwerf as well. No chances taken. Back to Siberian. And looks like that was game over. A loss for the Reich, a loss for the Oberkommando West. A victory here for the United States, a rather brutal battle. Rather close in the end, but in the end, Siberian simply did not have the forces to strike back when they more. The armor advantage was too great here for Crown Battle, and the amount of resources that Siberian could throw back at him simply did not amount to anything strong enough to really do something, in particular also with the airborne running under the light machine guns, laying down even further pain and harm upon his opponents. That was really a brutal fight. Well played by both on the end, Crown Battle played just a bit better. I mean, overall, both of them, though, could maybe use a bit better their commanders. I mean, both at most maybe used, well, Crown Battle made a bit better use of it. He used sort of basically the later abilities. No 50 calibers, no airborne, though, and for Zerberian, it basically amounted to the MG-34 and a few S-mines. I mean, beyond that, he made no use of the commander. I certainly think he could have done a bit more with that. Certainly would have been a bit harder to push off from time and again. That would have bought him, I think, the time tracked, you know win this. Instead, he didn't quite amount to that. So, and the King Tiger was a nice move, but in some cases not fully supported. And sometimes, you know, he didn't quite, you know, make full use of the ability, in particular, I think, with the entertainers, he should have tried combat blitzing around them. Though, of course, another option was, and I'm a bit surprised he didn't go for that, was actually getting a Stuka Sufus and basically bombarding them. That was a bit of a surprise move there by Sir Maybe he didn't think of it, or maybe he had some good reasons for it. I don't know. But I certainly, I think, would have gone for the Stuka Sufus there, sort of trying to deal with them, or maybe it would have gone for something else. Though I do think, you know, the Schwer Pencil was right here at that junction around here, I think was a bit of a mistake. I mean, it's very much out the open, a very easy target, in a very central fight there. I mean, one sense can certainly prevent your opponent from getting there, but at the same time, it's also an easy target for anti-tank guns. I definitely think you should have it here, or maybe even down here, covering both the fuel point and the victory point. It was only required Crab had sort of shift first down here, and he might also then left him a bit more to a flank. For say, for example, he wanted it from here, then he could have been attacked from here. So that might have been a bit more of a wiser option. But I definitely think he should have had either some emplacements or bunkers covering at certain junctions throughout this match, and he probably could have won this. But are they very close then? Certainly, also some good comments here for Crab Battle. I mean, good use of light machine guns, sort of right at the same spot he popped Browning Automatics, good use of the captain there early on, getting a pack out that definitely altered a lot from really allowed him to keep up pressure upon so being the anti-tank guns were also definitely well used with tear game and armor piercing rounds. He was a bit too eager to use it sometimes, but overall he managed to do a lot of damage again, particularly clearing out the Schwer Panzer quarters, but also several times thanks to the veterans he made to managed to get on them and the Sabo rounds to actually force it back. So really nice their conjunction of abilities and their usage. And also some nice flanking, some attacks from several angles at the same time, keeping up pressure. I mean, he was very close though, and that was partly because he got a bit too focused here around the early game and forgot about other victory points. So that was something that could have gone slightly uglier there had he been a bit slower there to react. And that's something he might want to work on for future matches. But otherwise, I mean, he did pretty well, though, of course, I've been also well. But again, just not quite well enough for this match. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in a replay. In. Oh, they do provide a link to the leaderboards. If not, always feel free to write feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers and thank you all for watching.